Welcome. So here we have a case of a cart with a mass attached to a horizontal spring. Everything's nice and frictionless, and we're in a natural length. So if we were to draw a free body diagram in this case, we would have a normal force, we would have a force of gravity, and everything would be nice and chill from there. If we pull this spring away, then if we have this new position for our cart, our spring will be a new distance delta x stretched out. And so in this case, we would have, our cart would have now a force from the spring, as well as our standard normal and force of gravity forces. So let's remind ourselves what the force from a spring is is negative k delta x in the x hat direction. So as we move from here to here, this delta x keeps changing. So as it changes, then the force changes, and thus then the acceleration changes. So we don't have a constant acceleration. So acceleration is not constant. So let's use energy. If we're using energy, we're saying kf plus ui equals kf plus uf equals some constant mechanical energy. So if we're doing this, then our ki is going to be 1 half m e sub i squared, and our spring potential energy from our spring is 1 half k x sub i squared. And then we're just going to say it is equal to the mechanical energy. So at any given point, in fact, we can even erase these little i's and just say at any point, right, for x and for v, that we have this relationship here. Well, that helps quite a bit, but what we can do is we can do a little bit of division to help us out to kind of make this seem a little bit easier to apply. If I divide by 1 half k for all of these, then what I get is I get m over kv squared plus x squared is equal to some constant. Right, we had it to be the mechanical energy, now it's mechanical energy divided by 1 half k. We don't really need to care too much about it. Well, we might start seeing something a little bit like this where we have x squared plus something else squared equals a constant. So I'm going to define y squared as equal to m over kv squared. And now we have y squared plus x squared is equal to some constant. If we had it where our velocity was 0, then y would be 0 and it would only be x squared. So this constant is actually x max quantity squared. Now, have we seen any sort of relationship in our math classes or anything like that where x squared plus y squared equals some sort of distance squared? And I hope everyone is shouting circles, circles, hopefully. So let's look at that. We've got x and y, and we have a circle for this. If we look at this circle for this, then as we look at this, that then all of this projection, this is my x, and all of this projection, this is my y. So if I'm looking at a circle, then I can also say, as I am moving around in this, that my x as a function of t as I move along in this circle, is going to be my maximum x times a cosine function, because cosine is the x projection. And my cosine is going to be something involving t, and we are going to call this something omega t. So, right, my x max cosine of, theta of t, yeah, 
um, or theta of t, right? Just call it that instead. So <laughs> we don't know the function, or we shouldn't. And so now if we look at this now, we can say, hey, I also know, so then y of t is going to be x max sine of theta of t. Well, if I know x of t and y of t, I can say that my v of t in the x direction is dx dt, and I can take the derivative of this. Well, the derivative of this is going to be x max negative sine of theta of t times d theta dt. But I already defined my v squared here, so I can write my v squared. This would be x max squared sine times negative sine would be sine squared theta t and then I'd have this d theta dt constantly squared but that's equal to right k over m y squared so my k over m y squared well, I know my y of t is this, sine squared, x max squared, so I have x max squared sine squared theta of t times d theta dt quantity squared is equal to k over m x max squared sine squared theta of t. Well, we can do a lot of canceling out, right? We have x max squared on both sides. We have this whole sine squared as well. And so what we found is we found that d theta dt is equal to the square root of k over m. So then I can take the, right, d theta equals square root of k over m dt, and that gives me that, right, theta as a function of time is square root k over m times time.